Uh, welcome everyone to the worst service of Father, Father God in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. As Jesus said, you know, our Father God is still looking for some, someone that, you know, worship the Lord in a spirit and in truth, okay? So, uh, before we hear the sermon, I'm going to read, you know, book of Psalm, chapter 19, uh, verse 1 through 14, okay? It's related to our uh, main uh, sermon message. The heavens declare the, the glory of God, and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. Day unto day utter his speech, and night unto night sheweth knowledge. This is no speech nor language, where their voice is not heard, and their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them has he got a tabernacle for the sun, which is an uh, bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hit from the heat thereof. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgment of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yeah, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me forth from secret fruits, uh, secret forts. Keep at thy servant also from presumptions, sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of thy my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Yeah, as you as you heard, okay. The sun is a symbol of Jesus Christ to come. He will rise again. He just set two thousand years ago after he was murdered by the Jewish people. He was sad. Now he is rising again. That means he's coming, okay, again. And um, as you have experience, right, your cell phone, right? No, no line, no cord, right, no wire, but we can, you know, communicate each other. Even car talk, you know, we can communicate with everyone wherever they are, right? Who made this possible? <laughs> Not scientists. It's God with that kind of, you know, the kind of, you know, things that it happened. That's why, you know, usually, you know, simply someone has found the theory, right? Yes. So, uh, today's the main scripture. It's Psalm chapter 20, verse 1 through 9. Before you read that, I want to pray for you. Heavenly Father, we are here again on the first day of the week when you completed our salvation from your death and resurrection, shedding your blood. Thank you for redeeming all our sins forever through your one-time death 2,000 years ago. 
just because we believe in Him. Open our eyes and ears spiritually, and so that we may understand your words. We may understand about you, and we may understand about ourselves, who we are, what we are, what we are supposed to do. Thank you, Father, in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody say, Amen. Okay, let me read the book of Psalm, chapter 1, uh, chapter 20, verse 1 through 9. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble, in the name of God of Jacob, defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary, and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings, and accept thy burnt sacrifice, Selah. Grant thee according to thine own heart, and fulfill all thy counsel. We will rejoice in thy salvation, and in the name of our God, we will set up our banners, the Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now know I that the Lord saves his anointed, he will hear him from the holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Save, Lord, let the King hear us when we call. Amen. Yeah, as you see, today is you know, the theme of sermon. God will fulfill his plan in the Lord Jesus Christ, even though it may be delayed. It may be slack. It may slack. What that means? There's two kind of timetables. One is the timetable of God, according to his plan. Another one is timetable for man and woman. Totally different. Some, somebody, you know, want something just in a couple of months. It may took, you know, two years according to the timetable of God. That's why we have to deny ourselves. We have to wait for the Lord until his time is come. All right? Okay. The prophet Isaiah testified of the Spirit of God as a spirit of wisdom and understanding and the spirit of counsel and might. And the counsel means it's planning, okay? And the spirit of knowledge and a spirit of the fear of the Lord. Therefore, unto all born-again Christian of the Spirit of God, that is the Holy Ghost, not only the wisdom and understanding, but also the spirit of counsel that is planning so that they may be able to do the will of God. Yeah, the prayer of King David, you know, in a main passage just we read, right, is for the people of Israel as a prophecy. He just prayed in the Holy Spirit what kind of des des what how they are they are destined, you know, to be in the future. In the day of the trouble, that means it's a great tribulation after rapture to come. Seven years, okay? The judgment days against the unbelievers. Lord God will hear them. Yeah, because, you know, Jewish people that believe in Jesus Christ major, you know, most of them not believe in Jesus Christ, but because of that, they had to uh, pass through the great tribulation, you know, terrible tribulation, seven years. But finally, they will, you know, call upon the name of the Lord. The God will hear them. In the name of the Lord, Jacob will defend them, and he will send them help from the sanctuary in heaven and strengthen them out of Zion. According to the promise under the law of Moses, he will remember all their offerings 
and accept their bond sacrifice. Yeah, God made a covenant with them, just giving them the law of God. In other words, they're giving Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments is a summary of all you know, details of the law of God. Yeah. Even though they had been involved in the fornication spiritually with Babylon, Assyria, Egypt, and so on, they had been chastened by God. Yeah, they had to be you know, disciplined by God. Had heard their prayer when they repented their sin. Afterwards, God destroyed the nations that had been used and axis upon seeing their arrogance. Whenever Jewish people of Israel sinned against God, God raised, you know, a gentile nation such as Babylon, Assyria, Egypt, Persia, Media, you know, and Greece and Roman Empire. Even, you know, I asked these days, right? Yes, many, um, many nations against Israel to chasten them. But after that, you know, most of the gentile nations, they become arrogant, you know, not knowing they have been used by God as an axis, okay, as a rod, okay, to, uh, to discipline the, his people. And God destroyed all the nations. Yeah, as you see, no Babylon, right? No Babylon, no Persia, no Assyria, no Egypt. You know, just like, just the same Egypt when the Pharaoh was ruled, you know, Pharaoh ruled, right? No such kind of Egypt anymore. No Roman Empire, no Greece, you know, under Alexander the Great. Yeah, because the history is, is his story. All the past history is his story, you know, controlled by our Lord. You have to remember that. Why you not study, you know, world history in school? Yes. Then you can examine the world history, screwing into, looking into the words of God. Oh, yeah, God has done everything. All right? When their king of Jewish people, Jesus, appeared unto them in the earth 2,000 years ago, they rejected him and crucified him because they trusted the king of Roman Empire, it's called Caesar, as their king. As they waited the price of the blood of Jesus to be imputed unto their children so far, 2,000 years, as we haven't seen. Multitude of them had been killed through the World War II, but finally, upon hearing their prayer, God restored the land of Palestine partially according to the promise unto Abraham, their ancestor. And God has increased the number of them, nearly 20 millions in their home country, as well as in all other nations, including America almost 6.5 million, more than that these days. And they're still waiting for fulfilling Zionism to make them the people of priests of the world when the Messiah is to come. Even though the Messiah that they are waiting for is not the true one, they shall repent miserably upon looking at the Lord Jesus Christ when he comes, to knowing themselves kill their Messiah, their God. King David prophesied in the spirit, God shall fulfill his all his plan for them through the Lord Jesus Christ after all. They shall rejoice for their salvation through their Messiah when they repent in the midst of great tribulation and they shall set up their banner of their Messiah in Zion, that is in Jerusalem, Finally, the Lord God will receive all the supplications of the remnant of Israel, very small number of people, in the millennium of the Lord Jesus Christ. Since then, they shall never worship the idols of Gentiles and no more trust the carnal weapons, but they shall 
trust only in their God so that they shall serve their God forevermore. The Holy Ghost in King David led in prophecy to fulfill the will of God for Israel through him in the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ in the earth. Prophet Ezekiel prophesied of the things that shall be done in Israel in those days. Listen carefully. It's a prophecy. Going to fulfill pretty soon. Therefore will I save my flock. That means, you know, Israel. And they shall no more be a prey. Prey means P-R-E-Y, okay? To be eaten by Gentile, right? And I will judge between cattle and cattle. And I will set up one shepherd over them. And he shall feed them. Even my servant David, he shall feed them. And he shall be their shepherd. Now, because, you know, David resurrected when Jesus rose again from the dead. They raptured already. Many, you know, Old Testament saints. And I, the Lord, will their God. And my servant David, a prince among them, I, the Lord, have spoken it. And I will make with them a covenant of peace and will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land and they shall dwell safely. Yeah, they dwell now in terror, right? In the wilderness and sleep in the woods. And I will make them and the places round about my heel a blessing, and I will cause the shower to come down in his season. You know, shower is a blessed rain, right? No more shower in California. No more rain these days. They're making this land that's you know desert. You have to pray for that. And there shall be showers of come down in his season. There shall be showers of blessing. And the tree of the field shall yield their fruit, and the earth shall yield their increase, and they shall be safe in their land, and shall know that I am the Lord, when I have broken the bands of their yoke, and delivered them out of the hand of those that serve themselves of them. And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen, all other nation, right? Neither shall the beast of the Israel uh, the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely, and none shall make them afraid. And I will raise up for them a plant of renown, and they shall be no more consumed with hunger in the land. Neither bear the shame of the heathen anymore. Thus shall they know that I, the Lord their God, am with them. And that they, even the house of Israel, are my people, says the Lord God. And you, my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men, and I am your God, says the Lord God. You remember, you know, at the time of Noah, except in a normal family, eight, pe eight persons, everyone on the face of the earth was, you know, swept away by the flood, right? Jesus said, when I come again, shall be exact same as the time of Noah, right? Yes. And he will establish his kingdom in the earth. Nobody, no sinners, no evil people, all right? Only righteous people abide. You know, it is our hope. Imagine how much wonderful heaven and earth shall be and New Jerusalem. Now, even though the people of Israel have broken the law of, the, of God, that is the old covenant, the Lord God has prophet Jeremiah and also prophet Isaiah of the new covenant that shall be established with God. Apostle Paul, the writer of the book of Hebrews, testified of the new covenant for Israel in the spirit. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, 
Listen, what can they come? When I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day, when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Yeah, as soon as they came out of Egypt, God gave them law, right? Ten commandments, right? It's different commandment, different covenant. Because they continued not in my covenant, they never keep the law. And I regarded them not, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law into their mind. No more in the paper, no more in stone. Just like Ten Commandments engraved in stone, right? Their mind. And write them in their hearts. And will be to them a God. They shall be to me a people. Yes, finally, people of Israel shall be people of Lord Jesus Christ. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall love me from the least to the greatest. And when I went to Jerusalem, whenever I meet people, you know, in Jerusalem, nobody knows Jesus Christ. But in those days when Jesus came and established his kingdom in the earth, and nobody, nobody there who doesn't know the name of Jesus Christ, because he already, you know, reigning in the earth as a king of kings and lot of laws. Okay, he continues to say, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. Yeah, because we believe in, believe in Jesus Christ. That's why he has been merciful for us, to save us, you know, forgiving all our sins. Same thing. Same thing. When Israel repent their sin, they shall be able to receive the mercy of God regardless of their past in unrighteousness. And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. In that he said, the new covenant he hath made the first old, now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. What a wonderful mercy of God. As God gave the new covenant unto the people, unto the Israel, when they repent their sins in the future, almost the end of tribulation, God made a new testament with them that believe in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, whether they are the Jew or the Gentiles, for the last 2,000 years. It's called the age of grace. It's different from Moses' law, different from and the new covenant with Israel, who have a new testament. The new covenant that is given unto Israel is the covenant according to the covenant with Abraham for them to dwell in the earth forever in Palestine, from great river Euphrates to the Nile River, but the children of God, just like us, to dwell in the new Jerusalem in heaven forever. People of Israel shall leave in the land of Palestine forever, but we shall live in the new Jerusalem in heaven. Apostle Matthew testified of the New Testament for the church of God. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave it thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Even though he died for all, but all, but you know, unfortunately, not all men shall not believe in him. That's why my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. Remission means forgiveness. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day 
when I drank it new with you in my father's kingdom. Yeah, when Jesus comes back as king of kings, a lot of laws. In Jerusalem, he, he will you know, drink you new know, wine with them. And all the and all and to all Christians that have the New Testament that was given to his church that is purchased by his blood, a blessed to be used to fulfill the will of God. Apostle Paul testified unto Timothy, he's a pastor, he said, God wants to save all men and let them come unto the knowledge of the truth. As God had been delivering the people of Israel in the midst of the days of trouble, that is great tribulation, and protected them, and the same blessing upon the children of God, and in the church of God is as the spiritual giant, God also sent help and strengthened us also these days. And God wants us to fulfill all the plans given unto us in the Lord, so that we are supposed to set up the banner of the gospel of Christ in all the earth. The blessing given unto the church is a double blessing compared to the one for Israel. For Israel shall be the people of priests in the earth, but the blessing for his church is not only to be the royal priest reigning with Christ in the earth, for a thousand years, and also to dwell in the new Jerusalem in heaven with them forever. As Jesus spoke unto his disciples about the parable in details in the book of Luke, chapter 19, someone shall reign in ten cities, and someone else reign in five cities when Jesus come to the earth as the king of kings and lot of laws. But unfortunately, some others shall have no reigning power at all. The shameful salvation. The Apostle Paul testified of the glorious blessing of ruling with Christ Jesus in his millennial kingdom. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. And if children, then they then heirs, heirs of God, and a joint heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with them, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. But if we hope for that, we see not. That we see not. We cannot see with our eyes, right? Then do we with patience wait for it. Yes. That's why we are supposed to walk by faith, not by sight. In the present world, they say, seeing is believing. That means unless you cannot see, don't believe. Because you cannot see Jesus, you, you, you don't have to believe. Yes, it's a total education of, you know, modern school and philosophies, all other religions. Apostle Paul also testified unto the Colossians that were living in the great city, just as Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, kind of great city, about the glorious hope warning them of sins that they could be involved in sin. Yes. Yeah, and living in great city is so easy for us to involve to be involved in sinning, right? Yeah, same thing. Close Colossians. They live in great city at the time. It's kind of warning, right? If you then be risen with Christ, that means you are saved, right? You have salvation, right? Seek those things which are above. Not enough. We are Christ's cities on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above. No more on your flesh, on your eyes, on your pride, right? 
not on the things on the earth, for you are not dead. Ah, yet you are dead already with Christ, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with them in glory. Talking about the day of rapture, okay? Jesus will appear in the air, like coming down to the earth, okay? To take us home. That day, you know, really catastrophe will be happening in the earth. Earthquake, you know, all kind of, you know, disasters because with, with the coming of Jesus Christ. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Therefore, your members which are upon the, the earth, that is fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil, concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Which things say the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Even children of God, they follow money, right? Money with the covetousness, that is idol worshiping. That's the way to receive wrath from God, okay? Chastening. We have to remember this. The God of Ebenezer has been uh, guiding us to preach the sound gospel of Jesus Christ and the knowledge of the truth in the purely reserved word of God unto all the earth according to his plan through the Holy Spirit, we are supposed to be one in the Spirit together with the saints in the internet and pray together the will of God shall be done as it said in the main passage. Remember? Yeah, let me read it. Grant thee according to thine own heart, and fulfill all thy counsel, counsel means plan. We will rejoice in thy salvation, and in the name of our God, we will shut up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Yes, he shall. Make all our plan in the Holy Spirit done. We have prepared, you know, 20 years, preparing the words of God. It's time to spread out, spread out to the earth, all the world. This is the cousin mission given to our church. If you are the member of this church, you must just remember, okay? We have to endure the temptation of Satan that is hindering us so that we may not be able to perform his will. Then we shall receive the honor and praise and glory from the Lord Jesus Christ in the day of Christ when he appears in the air sooner or later, when today, when tomorrow, when I don't know. Time has been up. And we shall be blessed to reign with them gloriously in his kingdom. Apostle Peter testified, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Even though we think, oh, his plan is delayed, you know, but no slack, no delay. As some men count slackness, but is long suffering to for, to us for us word, not willing that any should perish, but shall that all should come to repentance, to be saved. Prophet Habakkuk, he testified of the Lord Jesus Christ coming to the world gloriously to judge the judge the earth and reign gloriously in his kingdom in the earth. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, even though it's a little delayed to our eyes, right? Wait for it, because it will surely come. The Jesus surely come. It will not tarry. It will not be delayed anymore, right? He said that. After he knew, he understand when Jesus come, all right, at the time he's coming, is the real time for him to be blessed. That's why he resolved himself, looking toward the day of the Lord of judgment, and testified with trembling. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor 
of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stars. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hens feet, and he will make me to walk upon my high places. What about you? Upon listening to the message today, it's, a, it's going to be a good opportunity for you to make resolution for yourself, you know, how you live, supposed to live in the future, you know, waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says, the world passed by with the lost. Those who do the will of God shall abide forever. Yes, the words of God shall be done sooner or later unto our eyes. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us timely message. And also thank you for giving message related to our church. Knowing that it's a real time for us to spread the, the words of God to the all the nations, to build and sound churches everywhere, Lord. We cannot do that, but you can do it. Even though camel cannot pass through the hole of a needle, but you can make it done because you can make the hole of a needle the bigger than camel. We cannot do it. Thank you, Father. Give us faith and endurance unto all of us and also unto the all our internet saints, that all of us be the same in one in the Holy Spirit, to marching on, doing His will, setting up banner of the words of God, preparing your coming of Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ we pray, amen.